Hello, my name is Miguel and you're watching RPTV. The Region Park Social Development Plan, also known as the SDP, is an initiative for fostering unity among the different residents and stakeholder groups in the community. The Employment and Economic Development Working Group, the EED Working Group, is one of the four working groups of the SDP. The working group is made up of residents, grassroots groups, and organizations serving Region Park. On February 21st, the Employment and Economic Development Monthly Meeting featured presentations from the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, the Centre for Young Black Professionals, the Centre for Advancing Interests of Black People, and Moving Towards Opportunity. The meeting took place in the Daniel Spectrum Building in Regent Park. Excellent. Thank so, you. Let me recap. Business. Me recap. <laughs> so, Micro Grants Pitch Event is happening. Um, You'll get some business coaching, you get to practice your presentation skills, and then you get the, to pitch for this micro grant. How many? Only one person will win, Hussain? One person will win, Hussain? Uh, we're aiming for 15 business people. Ooh, do you want to tell us how much money? Do you want to tell us how much money? Um, it'll be between 1,000 to uh, 1,500. Okay, 10,000 to 1,500. So that's great for those who are like, I don't have any money to start my business. They're going to send out some information. It's from YSM, you gotta get on our mailing list. We got all the information. I'm gonna add you to the fold. All right, this is the guy that's gonna sign you up. Can I ask you a question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, who's, uh, is there any eligibility criteria? Oh, great or question. anybody can be part of it? Yes, there will be. Uh, so we will share the application form and the criteria shortly. Unknown at the moment, it will be shared shortly. Is there any age um, limitation as well or no? No. Okay, great. That's the main thing I want to <laughs> no, know. For sure, no. Yeah. No age limitation. She was asking what's the requirements. So they are still working through the requirements. Yes. Okay, great. Excellent. Oh, that was, did you, my, that was my what do you know about Regent Park. Okay, so we've got some more updates to go, but in the meantime, I think we're going to get into our presentations and let Ismail finish up the other updates uh, after he's completed our tech issues. Okay, so if we're set, we'll just go on to the next slide. Perfect. So my name is Biliana and I'm the program manager. Can you hear me now? There we go. Uh, so my name is Biliana, I'm the program manager at C and I'll just allow my colleague to introduce herself as well. And my name is Bumi Ehigiator. I am the social supports manager at C. All right, we're gonna um, take some time to tell you a little bit more about C. You've probably learned a little bit from you know, the impact video that um, was just shared, but you know, we'll tell you a little bit more from our perspective um, what C is about. So C, as you saw from, um, from one of our many um, logos, stands for Careers Empowerment Education. A little about our organization is that we are black focused, black led, and black serving charity here in Toronto. We are dedicated to addressing um, economic and social barriers affecting black youth from, for, uh, from ages 14 and over. Our activities are focused on developing what we believe to be a valued and valuable and untapped talent pool of young black people here within the GTA. C is about youth, youth workforce development, education and advocacy to influence our society on a systemic level and to contribute to the policies that affect our people, our people meaning black people. So, next. And a little bit about our vision and mission. Sorry, give me a minute. Tech issues. 
Okay. Th our vision. We are committed to ensuring that we achieve our vision of a society and econ economy in which black youth achieve economic stability and a strong knowledge of themselves and their potential to contribute to building prosperous communities. Our mission is to create a society and economy in which black youth achieve financial prosperity and, high, and a high quality of life for themselves and their families to further contribute to the advancement of Canada. Next slide, please. Perfect. Thank you, Bumi. Um, so we're just going to go a little bit into our values and what we stand for. Before we keep going, has anyone ever heard of C-Center for Young Black Professionals? Just by a show of hands, if you heard of who we are, with the work that we're doing. Okay, great. I was just talking to you and you mentioned that they, uh, you graduated from one of our programs. So it's amazing to see just how much our work is translating in, and impacting different people. Um, so a few of our core values and what we really stand for. The first one is that we are very person-centered. The work that we do, um, we always wanna make sure that our participants um, come first, meaning that they're influencing all of our programming, they're influencing the way that the models are created, they're influencing the decisions that we're making. So we really, call, we really engage them in everything that we do which is why we call them members, and you might, hear us ref um, you might hear me saying members instead of participants, but that's really what I mean. These are the individuals that are taking part in all of our different programs. So our work is very person-centered, and it's, um, we also believe in the importance of strong partnerships, because we know that we cannot do this work alone. And so we have, um, you know, through the period of time that we have been around, created different partnerships within the city, um, and these partners are coming in and just supporting us in running all of these different programs that we have. Social justice, building community, anti-oppressive work, as well as respect for diversity in black communities are just some of the values that we really stand for. Next slide, please. So one thing we always love to stress is that we are more than an employment agency. Um, I think when people hear workforce development, the first thing they think about, you're gonna help me find a job. That's really not what we do. We go beyond that. Like I said, we really wanna focus on holistic care. So we understand that you know, for our black youth and for the black community, it's more than just going into a job, but also understanding how do I maintain that job? How do I keep that job when you get there? So holistic care is um, you know, something that we really focus on the entire person, making sure that they understand who they are and they understand how to take up different spaces. So that's something that we teach. Again, going back to person-centered work, um, one of our goals is really to make sure that you know, we are developing youth that can go and be represented in our Canadian economy because that is something that we know, um, you know, a lot of youth are underrepresented. Black youth specifically are underrepresented. Um, again, we wanna make sure that they can become a part of that society. And another, um, another area that we focus on, especially when we are doing some of our social justice initiative is public policy. Next slide, please. Um, so we want to share just really quickly how C came about because we think that this is really important for all of you here to understand, um, you know, just the importance of the work that we are doing. So next slide, please. Um, this is really quickly our startup story. So C started... Um, as a catalyst of the Summer of the Gun. That was in 2005, where within the city of Toronto, we really saw um, between June to September, um, there were 25 gun-related homicides, and all of them were men between the ages of 14 to mid-40s, and most of them were black. As a result of this, um, the Youth Challenge Fund was, was launched. Um, this was launched by Delton McGuinty, who was the Ontario Premier at the time. It was launched in January of 2006, and it was a direct response to the growing concerns related to youth violence and gang involvement across the city. So this money was given to 13 neighborhoods across the city, um, Jane and Finch being one of them. I'm not going to name all of them, but it was really the responsibility of these neighborhoods to put this money into action by building different programs for youth. We can go into the next slide, please. Just a little bit about our funders, Dr. Kofi Hope and Shireen Ashman, which were both um, affected by gun violence. Um, 
came together and they started what we now call C-Center for Young Black Professionals. At the time, it was called Community Empower Enterprise, and it really was a grassroots initiative um, within the Jane and Finch community. Um, and one of the things that they did, which I think is really foundational for all of the work that we do right now, is they went into the community and they started to talk directly to the youth in trying to understand what do you need from us? What is it that's preventing you from finding work? What is it that's preventing you from taking part in society and in, our, in different communities? And some of the things that, that they heard were things like, you know, we want to be taken serious. We want to be able to go into organizations and have people actually look at us and respect us. We want spaces where we can just go and hang out. Um, we want skills that can translate into our resume because I think a lot of them were getting skills from different organizations, but these were not things that they could add onto their resumes. So taking all of these different things into account, um, Dr. Kofi Hope and Shereen Ashman came together and developed what we now know as C Center for Young Black Professionals. Next slide, please. All right, so where are we today? We became a charity in 2018. We are cultivating a talent pool of young black professionals to fill five industries <clears throat> that have major labor gaps within our community. We are, expecting, we, are, we are expanding nationally in, in the coming years by partnering with other organizations around the country to deliver our C Essentials curriculum and support them to do what we already do well here within the GTA. Um, we had our first um, national program in Montreal recently, and uh, we had 12 members within that cohort and they graduated from the program successfully and um, about half of them are now doing their placement. They're currently in their placement. They'll be probably finishing up, um, I think March 31st. So we are actually putting these things into, into motion. Like we're talking about it and we're doing it. And we hope to do more in the coming, in the coming years. Next slide, please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the program department. Um, the program department consists of two teams. Um, that is program delivery and social supports. And so Billiana is the manager for uh, program delivery team, and I'm the manager for social supports. Um, one, we work collaboratively. Uh, co we work together. We work collaboratively. I cannot speak English today, sorry. I think it's nerves. Um, we work together very closely in order for us to plan, implement, and deliver programming to our members um, and our alumni. We also have um, people we call alumni. I know we've been mostly talking about members, but our when, when people finish our program, when the young people finish our program um, and they graduate, they become an alumni. So we are just not... Um, with our members when they're in programs, but when they graduate, they continue to, to kind of reach back to us for support. And we are always there to support them for as long as they need us. So that is, those are the people we call alumni. So now you know who we call members and who we call alumni. Next slide, please. Okay. So as I said before, I'm the lead for our social supports team. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about our social supports team. Social support team pr provides the wraparound supports. I know you've heard that from the video that was shared before we started our presentation. So um, wraparound supports are services that you know, provide the holistic care in order for our members to be able to continue and face the barriers that are going to come, that they're gonna come across while they're going through programs with us. We provide person-centered case management services where each member's needs are assessed and we support each member with assessing the community resources that could help meet those needs that, that we find. We also provide strength-based and trauma-informed coaching sessions. We call them coaching sessions, um, but they really are counseling sessions. Um, with the coaching sessions, we, we walk alongside our members on their journey to realizing and meeting their goals. So whatever their goals are, whether they're short-term goals or long-term goals, we support them and you know, are 
you know, with them on the journey to meeting those goals in order for them to, to get that better quality of life that they're looking for. We also provide culturally relevant touch points and check-ins that provide in, informal engagement opportunities to further build rapport with each and every member we serve. We deliver health and wellness workshops that take into account the whole young person, not just their employment training. So we are talking about, you know, like I think um, Billion had mentioned, we do rise and, uh, rise and rest. We talk about um, time management, stress management. We're talking about, we're having discussions that is not just about, okay, um, this is your training for work. Now go and, you know, work. We talk about things that will help you be successful in life and in the job that you're going into. Because we know a lot of times, you know, when you're going into the workplace, it's not just about knowing your job. It's about those social skills. It's about those, those things that, you know, that maybe are not being taught, like, you know, with your education. So we focus on those things to make sure that the person is well-rounded when they go back into employment. We also have our very own psychotherapist. Um, and this, it, this incorporates mental health modalities and culturally relevant practices for the purpose of addressing each youth's mental health needs. Next slide, please. Thank you. So really quickly, I'll talk about my team, and that is the program delivery team. Um, so my team consists of you know, a group of different members that have different skills. So we have a program coordinator, we have a program lead, and we have a job developer. We call this the circle of care because we found that it's really important that our members are engaging with different people that can support them in different ways. So the coordinator really works on creating what we have, our curriculum for the different programs that we run. Um, we then have our program lead that focuses a little bit more on like day-to-day -day facilitation of the programs. And then we have our job developer, um, and the job developer helps, once our members graduate, they help them find the job. Um, and then social workers that Bumi spoke a little bit about, they're also part of that circle of care. Again, um, just touching on the importance of our curriculum. Our curriculum, again, is very holistic in the sense that we have what we call our C essentials. These are in-house developed workshops that are, again, helping our members build all of the different skills that they're going to need as young black adults and youth um, once they go into the workplace. And then we also have what we call our technical trainings. And I talked a little bit about partnerships. So we bring a lot of different partners to the table and they help us deliver different trainings. For example, when we had our Kitchen Masters program, Nestle was actually one of our partners and they came on board. They did a lot of different cooking trainings, knife skills, different things like that that our members were able to learn. Um, so that's really what consists in our curriculum. We have our C essential trainings, which are like soft skills, and then we have our technical training. Um, again, effective partnership is something that is always on the table. And then workforce development is something that we recently started doing, which is building our members' resumes and helping them find employment once they finish our programming. Next slide, please. So who are the people that we serve? I know we mentioned you know, black youth. Um, so again, you have to identify as, as being black. Um, you have to be between the ages of 14 to 30, living within the greater Toronto area, out of school and out of work, and you have to be eligible to work in Canada. Other qualifications for some programs, just depending on who the funder is, is that you, know, you might be on Ontario work, some of our members are on Ontario work, and of course you have to have, you know, you have to have an interest in the field that you're applying for. I think we missed it earlier, but we, we have programs in five different industries, technology, hospitality, social services, entertainment, and finance. So within those different fields, there are a lot of different programs that we have. Um, and then Bumi's just gonna give you a really quick run through of some of the things we did last year. All right, so for the 2022-2023 fiscal year, um, we are very proud of what we've been able to accomplish. We were able to complete 12 career training programs um, within the five industries that Biliana just mentioned. Um, 203 uh, young people graduated successfully from our program this past year. We completed eight, over 800 coaching sessions, which is our counseling sessions, and also um, combined with our psychotherapy sessions. Sorry, hold on. 
gosh. <laughs> I can't find my notes. And um, also, yeah, was that it? Oh yeah, 180 estimated Sea Essential workshops. And Sea Essentials are the specific workshops that we do at Sea, and that is like, um, consists of our power skills, our soft skills, our um, wellness workshops. Those are all under Sea Essentials. So um, expected programs for 2023-2024. Um, we are expecting to do 14 um, programs this year. Um, actually, I think it's gone to 15 now. So we actually just added a program today. So um, we are expecting to do about 15 programs this coming year. Um, the programs that we currently do, that we, we are currently have scheduled to happen um, is in, in hospitality, we do Kitchen Masters, which is a you know, kitchen-based, hospitality-based program. Um, we have the Social Services program, which is called Sea Leaders. We have um, two finance programs, which is insurance underwriting and mortgage underwriting. We have two tech programs, which is Sea Tech and Cybersecurity. And then we have several entertainment programs that are very, very popular. Um, one is styling, and it's not what it sounds like. It's actually film and wardrobe. That's what we call styling. I don't know how we got stuck with that name, styling, but that's what it's called. And then we have VFX. Um, we also have something called production accounting, which is about um, the money side of film, like you know the budgeting and everything that goes along with how how the money is spent when you're doing a film. So that's production accounting, and then we do E-Trades. E-Trades, it stands for Entertainment Trades, and it's basically to work behind the scene um, within films. So the people that are building the sets, the people that are doing um, you know, craft service, the people that are, you know, like all the different things that goes into um, making a film. Yeah, like set decoration, lighting, all of those little intricacies. The, our members actually, we partner with a union and they do, um, they train to, to work behind the scenes um, in film. Thank you. Um, so um, again, I know we spoke, we spoke a lot about the work that we do and some of the programs that we run, but I think um, one thing I wanna mention is that all of our programs are 100% free. So the members are not having to pay to come in, they just have to apply. Um, and if there's an interest, then they get into the program and they're able to access all of the different services that we're talking about. Um, lastly, we just wanted to make sure that all of you knew how to connect with us. So on our socials, you can connect with us on Instagram and Facebook at C Toronto, Twitter, C underscore Toronto. And you can also go to our website at ctoronto.org. And on there, you'll find a list of all of the programs we have, things that are upcoming. And if you know any black youth, that fits the criteria, please let them know that we have programs available for them and we really just wanna make sure that it's reaching the population that it needs to. So that is the end um, and yeah, we just wanna see if anyone has any questions that you might wanna ask. So our programs run throughout, our fiscal starts in April, so we go from April all the way up until December. Um, so we do have different programs running between that period, and the intake period does vary. So for some programs, there might be two cohorts, for example, Kitchen Masters, we might have one starting now, and another one starting in four months, let's just say. But you'd really, I really encourage people to just go to the website and check when the application pool is open. The most up-to-date information will be there. Is there something that you, you would do to engage them even if they had to, say, wait for a particular program end? Sorry. But, you know, with young people, if you, if, you, if you get them interested and then they can't connect immediately, you lose them. So is there a, a, something in your organization that allows a young person to be engaged 
with you, even if the, some, the program maybe that they're interested in, they have to wait until they could get into it? Oh, okay. So I think I understand what you're saying now. So if somebody applies for our program and they have to wait to get into it, um, they become our member when we, when we accept them into, the, into a program. So we cannot really legally engage with the person until they're, they're our member. But once, they're, once they become our member, that's, that's where I took the mic from, Billiana. that's where social support comes into play. That's what us as social workers have to make sure that we build rapport with each and every young person that is on our caseload to make sure that we we help them stay engaged with the program that they're doing. You know, we're the ones that are calling to check in on them when they don't show up to programs to make sure that they're okay. And if they're not okay, what is it that we can do to make sure that you're able to keep coming to program? What, you know, what are your needs? How can we meet your needs to make sure that, you know, you are able to finish this program that you so very much want to do? So that is where social supports comes into play. So, um, you, so that's how we keep them engaged. Now, do, does everybody get to the finish line? As much as we want them to, no. It, we, we do not always have 100% of the people that we admitted get to the finish line. But for the most part, we have an amazing retention rate because of the wraparound supports that we have. You know, for the most part, we, you know, we, we have like, what, 98% or something retention rate because we're constantly checking in. We're constantly making sure that we are doing everything we can to, to meet their needs. And so, you know, that, that's what we do. That's, you know, that is what makes us unique. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, there, sir. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, is there an age limit, or what is the age range for uh, the youth? And um, I know this is prioritizing black youth, but if there are spaces, will you also kind of reach out to um, further marginalized youth that may not be black or black identifying? Um, the criteria for our organization and the mission for our organization is f specifically for black youth. Um, now, for the criteria, it's 14 to 30. So you, ha you have to be under the age of 30 um, before the program starts. So there's sometimes that, you know, we have somebody that is really interested, but they're, they've already, they just turned 30. We cannot accept them. We don't make these rules. It's just the way Canada Youth Funding is set up. So, um, yeah, so that's usually, that's the criteria that we have to adhere by. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I think, um, thank you for having us. Um, you know, if there, you have our handles and ways to contact us if you have any other questions that you didn't think of right now. Um, it's, it's our, you know, thank you for inviting us and, you know, um, having us be able to share a little bit about our organization. And, you know, have a great night. Back in my facilitation role. So I'm changing up the order a bit because, you know, we had some technical, di di technical difficulties starting up. So I'm going to invite uh, Lizette Kasul. Everybody knows Lizette. Um, see, everybody wants to clap. Yay, Lizette. <laughs> you want how much more dollars? <laughs> um, she's not getting paid to do this. Yes, yeah, so you know, no honorarium for her. Um, but Lizette is a, a, a member of the community and uh, a member of the black community and we wanted her to share her employment journey because it started in Regent Park. <laughs> oh, delight. Okay, <laughs> okay um, good evening everyone. Uh, I'm Lizette Kasul and uh, I'm a, region, a resident of Regent Park. I'm a TCHC resident and um, a mom of six, and um, I'm a member of the Social Development Plan, and I'm so happy that uh, to be here tonight. Thank you, ED, for inviting me to share my employment journey. Yes, girl is right. 
my employment journey started in Regent Park. Um, after graduating from Rice University, I uh, have a degree in urban planning, but I never had the opportunity to work in the field because I chose to raise six children. And um, I'm happy that I made that choice and they are healthy and smart and uh, I'm so proud of them. And after that, um, I was invited by um, uh, Ines to be part of the social development plan and be part of the safety network. And within that, I joined, I did some advocacy course. One of them was how to speak with confidence. And the other one was how to lead a meeting and advocate for others. So within that, I, I gained some experience and I, I gained some knowledge on how to advocate for people and uh, how to advocate for the community and uh, how to be more engaged in the community. And then uh, in 2020, I was approached by a friend of mine that um, she, was, she used to run a program for moms and children but the program didn't receive any funding. So then we decided to, she decided to let us run the program. I, I didn't know I was running the program, but I thought I was um, helping her run, but then I, I found out that I was the one who running the program. And I ran the program. <laughs> well, I was tricked, but it was a good trick. <laughs> so I ran this program with four beautiful women in Regent Park very strong ladies, and uh, I'm the one who does the facilitation every week, and uh, we have Fazla who has make sure that the, the clients have a delicious meal, and because our program starts at 12 o'clock is uh, lunchtime, and uh, we have Mushida who has uh, do the outreach and make, uh, make sure that we all, the community gets the information needed in order to feel informed. And also we have Anika that makes sure that all the, the um, if, uh, what do you call, like, uh, she connect us with uh, uh, communication, like if you need to um, invite people. Sorry, Apazla? <laughs> if you need to invite, and she is our, our um, communication person. And um, I'm so honored to be part of that group. And uh, then, uh, in, um, after that, I, I applied for uh, Tridel and I got the position as a project coordinator, and I used one of the skills that I gained with the women's group, which is communication and presentation skills. And uh, part of my job was to make sure that we get information across the community and inform the people what is going on and what they want to see for the phase four and five organization. And uh, I was part of the engagement process and it was amazing. And I also a part of the communication table, which we do the outreach, and we make sure that people are informed. We want to bring the voice back to the community. We want the community to make their own decisions. And as we are in the process of realization, we want the community to come together and tell uh, Tridel what we really want. We want to make our own choices. And um, right now, I work with the Margaret Housing, is a support housing that supports women with mental illness and uh, women that have been experiencing homelessness for quite a long time. And my position is life skills and um, uh, recreational worker. And basically, again, I help them uh, gain the skills that they lost during uh, this um, length of homelessness. I advocate for them, I listen to them, I, you know, I'm there to support them because they're human, they deserve to be treated with, the, you know, with respect and the love. So I'm, I love being, uh, doing what I'm, I'm doing and I am, yeah, and every single day is a challenge for me because they suffering, they worries is my worries and I make sure that they're heard and they're taken care of. And um, I also want to you guys to acknowledge that this 28 days of February is Black History Month. And uh, I'm honored to be black. And I, I've seen, I, I see our voices being amplified. I see our, our voice being heard. And uh, we have 
Marcy Ian as a Minister of Women and Gender and Youth. We have uh, Kamala Harris, which is the one of one of black um, African women as a vice president. And we had our first African-American president, Barack Obama. So this is such an honor to, to, to um, witness the greatness of the Black History Month. And uh, I, I can go further and uh, back the days that I'm my daughter was like, mommy, when I go to school, I mean my friend, they used to go to the back. But because this is Black History Month, I want to be Rosa Parks. I want to sit in the front because I deserve to be, to be in the front. So I was like, go girl, go girl. And I'm doing the same thing. I also sit in the front every day when I go to work. So thank you, girl, for inviting me and share my, my employment journey. And I'm so happy to be here tonight. Thank you. I think what is important is that, one, you got a job in Regent Park, you got some skills, you did some, um, uh, some community work, give, gained some more skills, and now you have a full-time role, right? So that, for me, that's a journey, right? And that's a journey to be celebrated. All righty, and there's more. Every month we'll have one amazing person uh, from the community because there are many stories to tell and we should continue to tell our stories. Next up, we have the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Uh, so if you're thinking about entrepreneurship, this is the group. All right. How are we doing on time? How much time we got? Okay. So the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce was established five years ago. We did our first launch in 2019. So you I'm. You might have to introduce yourself first. Oh, okay. I should do that, right? <laughs> so my name is Doug Minter, and I am the director of partnerships and sponsorships, and I lead. I'm a program manager for one of our projects. It's the Elevate Black Business Entrepreneurship Program, sponsored by the federal government. So we were one of the 40 some odd organizations who were funded by the federal government to expand our programs nationally. So we have a plethora of programs, and I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of slides and stuff. That It's been late. It's, we kind of started late this evening. But I did want to tell you a couple of key things. The Chamber of Commerce is here to stay, and we want to be engaged with every type of entrepreneur whether you're a startup or whether you've got 100 employees. We have programs and services for every level of maturity. If you just have an idea or, hey, I've been selling cupcakes for 10 years. I want to expand. I want to turn it into a franchise. Whatever your entrepreneurship dreams are, we want to help you with those dreams. Our Elevate Black Business Program, of course, is devoted and focused on black entrepreneurs, but guess what? We welcome allies. If you want to be in our space, we will welcome you heartedly into our programs. Okay? Now, what I would like to do is do a quick advising session for about 10 minutes with you. Okay? And that's the best way to understand how we do what we do. So how many entrepreneurs or people who thought about entrepreneurship, how many of you are in the crowd today? Fantastic. OK, please come here. Come, 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 come. We're going to do an advising session. It's the best way to understand what we do. Have a seat. Have a seat right here. We're just going to have a quick advising session. Is that okay? All right. And there's a PowerPoint that all of you all will receive. Um, that PowerPoint will be sent to everyone that's online. And it explains how to enroll in our programs, descriptions of our programs, all that good stuff. You can do that later. Right? Is that cool? So tell me. So there's a couple of things that I'll tell everybody before we get started. At the chamber, we use 
a number of different modalities. I heard the young ladies talking about modalities and that, that's very important. We primarily look at business in this way. Every business has four challenges, right? So you've got to understand the philosophy of how we teach to make, to make it make sense. So there's four major challenges. You want an attractive concept, correct? You want it to be attractive, right? So that people come to you. That's the first challenge, is to have a, a really cool idea, right? Something that attracts people. You gotta have a hook to get the fish. The second, you want a strong operations, right? You want a strong organization, which means what? You gotta have a team. You want great employees, good advisors, mentors, all of those things. You want, a, you want a profitable operation, right? So whether you're social impact focus or social enterprise focus, that's great. That is a wonderful thing to do. But at the end of the day, you got to make money so you can do those social impacts that you're trying to make. And then lastly, you want lasting customer relationships. Right? You want that business that people are like, I'm not buying no cupcakes from anybody else other than her. That's it. That's my cupcake lady. Ain't nobody better. And that's where you need to go. That's what you want to build. Those are four challenges that you are building your business to create. The problem is behind those four challenges are 20 focus areas. So we use a system called growth wheel, right? And as you look at that circle, there's 20 things, branding, marketing, sales and service, right? Networking, your, your revenue model, right? There's all these things, legal issues, employees, partnerships. <laughs> Business processes, there's all these things spinning around your business going, help me, feed me, do something with me. And that's what makes it difficult. But the system that we teach allows you to say, okay, I can't handle 20 things at once. Nobody can. But I can handle one or two or maybe three in a 90-day cycle. So every 90 days, you got to pick the things out of those 20 focus areas that are going to help you grow your company, right? Everybody's heard first things first. Well, how do I know which thing is first? How do I know what's second? How do I know how to prioritize what I'm supposed to do right now? And that's what we're here to teach, right? We can't tell you everything to do. But we can help you be structured, be focused on the right priorities at the right time, and we throw the kitchen sink at you to support you doing that. Does that make sense? And it doesn't matter whether you are on public assistance, on no assistance, <laughs> You're, it doesn't matter. Entrepreneurship is the ultimate equalizer. It is no respecter of person. It just says, if you can make those four challenges happen, you got the baddest cupcakes in town, and you're here at TCHC, guess what? I'm driving here to get my cupcakes from you. That's, that's just the way, it's, that's the way it is. That's how cool business is. It's the ultimate equalizer, okay? So this is DePars Cottrell who's one of our regional business managers, and one, one of the reasons why we're even here is he made the connection to TCHC, okay? So just wanted to introduce my colleague in crime. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, we're gonna do a brief advising session so you can understand how we do what we do. So typically what we'll do is we have cohorts. So we have a mastermind program. And so we put you in a mastermind group with other companies that are going through the same thing you're going through. Because guess what? You can't do it by yourself. Nobody builds a business by themselves. You have to have a tribe, a family of supporters. Okay? 
So one of the things we do in an advising session, we ask two questions. Give me a success story about your business and then tell me what's keeping you up at night. Oh, so you just have an idea, right? An idea, yeah. Okay, tell us about your idea. Um, well, you know, nothing has gone off the ground yet. I'm still kind of doing the, the research and, and looking, but I would like to start a home goods store where, you know, it's a collection of little trinkets or, you know, vases and pottery. I personally love stickers and little knickknacks for stationery. Um, my idea would be just to have like a little space where I could do like a rotating session of uh, different products that come through that you just wouldn't find in your everyday store because everything looks cookie cutter. Mm. Um, but the thing is, you're right, the logistics, how do I get the material in? Where do I get the funding to start that? Where do I lease or do I shop online? It, you know, it's, it's kind of overwhelming. So it's just an idea that's been in the back of my mind, but I'm researching out there to see what's out there. So what would you advise? <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I would do is really do two things. Right? One, it's a great idea. Right now, one of the hugest um, growing businesses right now is retrofitting, right? Going in and remaking products out of old products. I have a young lady right now that's in our program. She started out with nothing, picked up some furniture from the side of the road that was being thrown away. Spent 30, 40 bucks in chalk paint, sanded it down herself, took weeks to sand it, sold that piece for a couple thousand dollars, used that to build her website. Mm -hmm. Now she has a team of people. And here's what her superpower is. Yeah, there's plenty of people redoing for old furniture, but guess what? I looked into it <laughs> and it's amazing because I bought a piece that's now worth $10,000 for 80 bucks in a value village. You can't go anywhere and do that, those kind of numbers. That's one of the few places you can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, think about all of that that goes into the home mm -hmm. and start asking, hey, would you buy this? Have pictures. Just go around and say, hey, I'm thinking about a business, I'm an entrepreneur, and I just want to know, would you buy this? Is this something you would put in your home? Finished products. They don't have to know where it came from. They just need to know, you just need to know, hey, would you buy this? Is there a demand for your product and service? And then the second thing is who is going to buy it? So there's one thing to hear from people, yeah, I like your idea. The second thing is you want to create an avatar for that perfect customer. Are they a female? Are they a male? Do they live in Durham? Do they live in downtown Toronto? Where's your customer and what do they look like? And you should be able to describe them to the T. Right? One thing I want to say to you, write it down. I don't know how you done that yet. Have you wrote down your idea? Have you wrote down? No, no, it's, it's still, you know, in my mind, just kind of going through, you know, searching through Pinterest and Etsy and Instagram and just taking a look and compiling it in my head. But nothing has been written down yet. I thank you to parse. <laughs> this is great. This is my young Jedi. So here's the thing. Writing things down is so important. I don't know what it is, but there is some spiritual <laughs> element that happens when you write things down. It, they start, the seed starts to germinate, okay? And we give you access to some of the state-of-the-art, user-friendly, not too hard to use software that allows you to do what he just said, to organize it so you can see it and you can share it with other people quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're doing this? This is your customer? This is your revenue? Oh, okay, yeah, got it. Go do it. Go do it. Just do it. <laughs> don't, worry about, don't worry about those 20 things that are freaking you out. There's typically just one thing that you need to do every 90 days that's going to push you forward. If you get that one thing done, then you can move on to the next. Wow. No, thank you. Yeah. It's the inspiration. <laughs> yeah, please do it. What's your idea or tell us about your business? Yeah, not, not business, but an idea. Yeah. I just want to open a bakery. 
Okay. Yeah, I love to bake. Make it, the, my family, entire family loves to bake. And um, I just don't know where to start. So, whenever you're doing something that could harm the public, right, make them sick, <laughs> right? <laughs> we had to talk about the worst case first. You need to make sure that you understand the compliance mm. of the thing. Unfortunately, that's the place where I tell people to start. It's not the fun place, right? I could tell you, bake the bread and let us have some and give me some butter, right? I'm a big guy, right? I like a little butter on my bread. So I want to eat it right now, right? Yeah. But that's not going to help you understand what you're stepping into, right? So call Health Canada and say, I want to open a bakery. What are the compliance? What's the rules? because there's been some relaxation of the rules mm -hmm. since COVID. So now you can do home baked things mm -hmm. to a certain level. Mm -hmm. Once you get past that level, you gotta go to a commercial kitchen, mm -hmm. which could cost anywhere between 25 and $100 an hour to use someone's commercial kitchen to cook your food. Mm -hmm. But ghost kitchens are popping up what we call ghost kitchen, those kind of businesses where you don't have a brick and mortar, right? So you're saving that cost. Because mm -hmm. to go brick and mortar, you're looking at 250000 to start anywhere in the GTA. you you got to have that much, right? So one of the things that you can do, though, is have a ghost kitchen. Find a commercial kitchen. There are many churches that have mm -hmm. commercial kitchens that you can partner with. Start baking out of there. Let them be your first client mm -hmm. and then start getting into the stores or wherever you want to bake, right? Um, some people don't think those are great businesses. They actually are. Mm -hmm. I know a gentleman who has a $60 million bakery. Started with just one, bought another one, bought another one and kept buying them and then he got investors interested in what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing sexy. He's just baking bread. That's it. Mm -hmm. So it's very lucrative. So how long it takes for, for a person to accomplish, accomplish what you really want, like in terms of? It's, it, it grows as fast as your leadership. Mm -hmm. As fast as you can lead other people, mm -hmm. as fast as you can grow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Love Thank it. Thank you. Sir. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, both of the ladies have already mentioned. So, like, I'm in the same situation as they are in right now. So you have I, an idea? I, I do have an idea. I'm an event management graduate. Uh, I want to run, a, like, you know, even industry. Uh, I'm thinking of, uh, like, entertainment on an event. So, I'm looking for, like, you know, a startup, like, you know, how do we, uh, the most important thing is always fun, right? And then uh, so many technical things. And like, uh, I see lots of events happening in the region park. So I wanna get into the community first and then like, you know, get some like, you know, training or uh, uh, like, you know, training on how to get the funds and things and like uh, how to choose the like, you know, uh, industry in the event and then like which one is more faster profitable so like it's easy to start and then you know you land yourself and then you know start uh, brainstorming so like so I'm seeking uh, like you know how can I do that like you know uh, so and and then uh, of, of course like uh, it's like not easy to run a, a business when you have a limited fund too so like right yeah so right if you can advise, like, uh, so, like, so yeah. you, you spoke about comedy. Did you, is that what you said? You were interested in, like, comedy, comedy, yeah, or, or sorry, community events. Or yeah, so, like, comedy, even, no, it's always better to start with because you don't need more fun, right? I understand. Yeah, so, like, I want to get it in the field, like, mm -hmm. you know, so that I can more brainstorm my idea and then, like, you know, I can look forward what exactly, like, you know, I'm onto. And then, like, from there, I can, like, you know. So what I, what I want to do with that is I want to challenge you to kind of think a little more niche down. Niche and down, And kind of okay. tell me a little bit about 
again, similar to the, to the first one, which is yeah, yeah. who your average customer is, but yeah. also what your average venue looks like. Uh, yeah, so are you like, trying to sell out stadiums at, at you know, yeah, Social that, Bank? I, or you trying I to saw do... that too. I, I browse everything with the Daniel Spectrum, and then I went through the, like, you know, even I can, I, I, I talked to a few of the, like, uh, food industry people, restaurant, and then uh, the ghost kitchen, right? They're going to, like, uh, uh, they, uh, let's see, today we have a food here, right? So, like, I talked with the restaurant people too, like, on a commission base and things, so stuff like that, like, so that I can book for other people, and they can give me the commission, right? Kind yeah. Of stuff. So, I, so here's even here's. I saw in the like here down the spectrum to like to book the venue, right? There are so many. I saw the difference between non-profitable organization and profitable organization. So like, is uh, like uh, the venue prices are way like low for the you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. And then uh, I was thinking, like, you know, if I can start with the community stuff thing so that, like, you know, uh, I'll have broader idea to, like, you know, uh, think on the industry itself, right? Yeah, so. Oh, this is a really solid, really solid yeah. Yeah, so event planning, event brokering. Yeah. You know, promotions, you know, being a yeah, promoter. Yeah, you said brokering? Yeah. That, being that a promoter, is what, like, you know, yeah. th those, those opportunities are out there. Yeah. The thing, like Depar said, you want to niche down and yeah. be special. Yeah. Be different yeah. so that people go, wait a minute. I want a comedian. Yeah. But I want a comedian to come to my house, perform for my kids, yeah. something clean, and leave. Where yeah. do I go to get that? Right? That's unique. Mm -hmm. There's not just a list of, hey, yeah. here's all the comedians that will come to your house and perform. Yeah. But I would love to do that. Right? I'd love to have that. that. You own that market now. Yeah. So uh, a, big, a big part of business is owning a particular um, sector okay. of what's actually being performed. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot similar to um, the conversation on patents. So okay. you really want to kind of own that unique space. Okay. So with you, it, it may just be um, you, you're specialized in event planning for yeah. a community, yeah. but you have access to partners and vendors and, and, and yeah. in places, positions yeah. that nobody else can get, like not even the big firms can get into, yeah. right? That's, that's the type of thinking you want to kind of uh, start to break down a little bit because yeah. then it will help you figure out, well, who my clientele is and also mm -hmm. who I need to talk to to even get into that space because most likely – you're the only person thinking about this, mm -hmm. which is awesome, and most likely you're the only person who can break that break that ceiling. And we yeah. want you to succeed in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, got it. Thank yeah, you. I love it. What he what he's talking about, and I'll wrap up is the difference between blue ocean and red ocean. Yeah. So red ocean is when you just go directly to the competition and you just start button heads, right? You just say, "Hey, I can make a better hamburger than Wendy's. I'm just going to go directly and compete with them." That's red ocean. You can survive, but it's hard, right? Cirque du Soleil is a circus. They are technically a circus, but it's not the same as Ringling Brothers, right? Cirque du Soleil, when you say that, you automatically know that's a totally different type of circus. And they own that space. And there's people coming after them, but they're so far ahead. When you're in the blue ocean, you're 15 years ahead of your competition. And that's where you, you always want to try to position yourself in the blue ocean versus going head to head with the sharks. Does that make sense, yeah. everybody? Yeah, I have one more question. Uh, like, so like, uh, let's say like you, you came up with the plan, right? So how do you register your like you know company and then like your or, uh, yeah your corporation yeah or, well, and then just how, one sec. yeah yeah so um, you're you're asking about registration and all that stuff yeah so we have a team of advisors okay sixteen advisors okay getting ready to be twenty across okay. the country but okay. we have a ton here in Toronto we'll teach you everything you need to know. Okay. We'll walk you through those yeah. steps. Thank you so much. Thank right? you. Right? Yeah. Because there's too many steps to explain that tonight. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but I understand. We're here to help you with those yeah. steps. That was my first question. The how do I get enrolled with the program? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, like, yeah. And everyone here, if you go to elevateblackbusiness.ca, elevateblackbusiness.ca, and it'll be in the PowerPoints that you're going to get. There's explanation of all of our programs. You apply for one of our programs, 
reach out to DePars. DePars will be here on a consistent basis. We'll be here at least once a week, hopefully, is what we're trying to do on site so that you can come and get the services you need and ask questions, right? We want to be in your community because if we're away from you, you, there's too many things you may need. So we want to be here and be part of your community, right? Hi. Um, so I started with popcorn and cotton candy. Love it. I will literally, I took a risk. I used to call barrier management and say, hey, I'm using your space. I'm doing this. So I went ahead and did it. I got my extension cord, so now I have, from the popcorn, cotton candy, I have a snow cone. I have, I do empanadas through the pandemic. Okay. It's actually been going very well. I have regular customers from Richmond Hill and different areas coming and purchasing. I just purchased a hot dog machine. Smart. So um, I'm going to train it this Thursday. So I've, I'm very blessed and grateful to a lot of the people in the community for supporting me. And for me taking that opportunity, like I said, I started like with a budget where, shit, am I gonna make it? Am I not gonna do it? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna, so I just took a risk of, okay, this money, even if I don't have the food for the week, but I'm gonna take that chance. So I'm grateful for that opportunity for me pushing myself and doing that. And I've been Love in it. every event in this community. I, I do it everywhere. Great. So I'm very, like I said, I'm very blessed and, and grateful to the people in the you, community. You, you're the type of entrepreneur investors love because you put your own skin in the game is what yes. we call it, right? And that shows me that you're passionate about what you're doing and you believe in I yourself. Love it. That, that is an important entrepreneur trait, is to show people that you believe in what you're doing. Yeah. So and much so to. that you took a risk, <laughs> right? That's the nature of being an entrepreneur, is taking the risk. It's taking that yeah. leap of faith, right? And sometimes you'll fail. More times oh, yeah. than not, you will fail. But like, you keep believing in yeah. yourself, eventually good things happen. Even with the empanadas, like I took the risk, I did it during the pandemic when I was, we were home. And my kids, I did it for my kids, and they go, Mom, this is great. Why don't you do this business? I go, eh, no, I don't think so. But then I go, you know what? I'm going to take that risk. And it's been going good. I even do my own hot sauce, empanadas, the hot sauce and stuff. So hopefully Thursday you guys come, buy out from me the empanadas, and you taste it. It's delicious. There's a lot of people here that have eaten my empanadas. Yeah, so. I, I <laughs> look, everybody, look. That, see, that, that's, that's a customer testimony. That's testimony right there. So what, what's, your, what's your, look, the parson are already thinking about your bottles of sauce. I already, I'm already like, hey, wait a minute. That's a good idea. I want to give you, um, and this is kind of like dating me, but like I want to give you an idea. Have you, but I want to ask a question. Have you, have you ever asked local universities to come in and, be part of the vendorship and sell on, on, on campus. No. And the, the reason why I ask that is because when I went to school and I went to U of T, there was a cotton candy and popcorn on site for student orientation, for reading week, and then in terms of the summer, like the last day of exams, last days of school, and then during summer school. You do it's a, it's a competitive idea because you're competing with, obviously, they have their own list of vendors. Yeah. But if you pop in, especially with something as, as unique as, as empanadas, I can't pronounce I'm sorry. Empanadas. Empanadas. I think you just, you just change the entire game. And you just, you're just there. I got cotton candy, hot dogs. What else I got? Popcorn. Popcorn. Snow and cone. empanadas. And snow cone. And snow cone. And You're I killing the game. I to start business of lemonade. He's only four lemonade. years old. You're killing the game. Yeah. You're a one-stop. <laughs> yeah, like you're a food court by yourself. The key for you is location, location, location. Yeah. All of these for like 10, 15. Man, the whole, you're getting a lineup of students. And you'd be surprised how many parks um, oh, yeah. around the area and outside the GTA will let you post up 
Oh, yeah, you just have to work with the city governments. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but see, here's the, here's the thing, though. What if you reach out to other people with other public people, other people that are on public assistance in Aurora, in Barrie? You could franchise this idea within the community and parlay yourself through all the other communities that look and act like this one, that nobody else cares about, that nobody else even sees. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, this is huge what you can potentially do within this community. This is family. Guess what? They can ignore you if they want to. I, we were, we have, Shane and I have had this conversation. Felicia and I have had this conversation. I said, I want us to be, have a strong footprint within this community because there are winners here. There are winners in this community. And I don't care what people think. I don't care. I'm from the United States originally. So I get it. I know what hoods are. <laughs> Right? This is not a hood. It can feel like that. And the perception can feel like that. This is a beautiful place with beautiful people in it that just need an opportunity. That's how I see it. Well, I'm loud and pushy too, so. Well, I love that too. <laughs> right? You got to kind of be that way to be a good I'm entrepreneur. Loud. When I'm in my little uh, thing of Andy, uh, Sandy, uh, selling, I'm loud. I put my, my Latino music and my voice. Good. And it's like, Power to let's the people. go, people. I feel you. I feel you. So. <laughs> so, how did you guys like your little master? I love this little master. What did you guys think? Give them a round of applause. This little mastermind group right here. I kind of like this little group. Y'all got a little vibe. Y'all got a little something, something. This is what we do. How does that feel? Right? I still need more. So. Thank you on behalf of DePars, myself, and the, the Canadian Black Chamber of Commerce, again. TCHC. And TCHC. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shane, for, being, for, for allowing us to be here in this space, man. I really appreciate you. But we're here, and we're, we're not going anywhere. We're going to keep pushing, even if it's just once a week. It's Entrepreneurship Day here, and we want you to come and meet in your group time to meet. Let's go. Let's grow these companies. Okay? Well, I have learned a lot through Gail. She's uh, had a couple of... Amazing lady. Stuff, so I've been learning more and more. I've never been to one of her sessions of entrepreneur and stuff, so I've been learning more through Gail. Fantastic. Great lady. So we, I've already connected, and we're going we're gonna to make things happen, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's that's it. Was this okay? Was this worth your time? All right. I will like I I did register for two days of work. That's okay. So like I, I just want to give you my information. Yeah, this the, this guy right there, the boss. Where's the boss? Ismail? Yeah, the boss right there in the green. Yeah. He takes all the information. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we are dwindling fast. Um, but thank you very much for that information. That was amazing. Uh, our next uh, program is, is Fatima, and it's really an update on a program that is coming. So yeah, we've got people here to share the word. So the more they can hear the word uh, firsthand, that's awesome. Plus we have Thanks, Gail. Online. Thanks, everyone. I won't take too much time, and I know that we were late this evening, and I want to make sure that you get the information that you um, needed and wanted, so just want to give folks an update that the Moving Toward Opportunity Program, or MTO, is running again this year, and it's going to be uh, launching in March. So we've got um, application an application deadline. Technically, it's at the end of this week. It will likely be extended a little bit, so I'll share the poster with everybody who's come to this event. Um, but the MTO program is for grade 11 and 12 youth uh, who are in school and going back to school next year. It is a youth employment program with 13 weeks of pre-employment training 
covering everything from networking to emails to cover letters and interviews and resumes, all of that good stuff, uh, once a week after school for 13 weeks. And then you get connected to an employer in the institutional or private sector uh, for an eight week paid internships, uh, internship. And we've worked with employers in the past architecture firms, law firms, design firms, uh, financial institutions, all of that. So these are really great, important opportunities. Um, so please keep a lookout for that poster. You can also reach out to me at the Daniels Corporation. Uh, Shane, can you pop this in the chat, my email? fsaya at danielscorp.com if you want to know more information about the MTO program. Daniels Corp. Daniels Corp .com. And that's all. Just wanted to give you a quick little update. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Fatima. Uh, Ismail, do you have any updates? Yeah, uh, just a very brief update. Uh, we're very close to hiring uh, for the project, uh, the workforce integrator. This is a role for uh, someone who will help bridge between the developer and jobs that are created from the developer to community. Uh, and uh, we are very close to hiring. And uh, so just, uh, uh, th that's the update. There are also other job opportunities that are coming. So uh, I think one of the amazing things that we did was uh, we did door-to-door uh, -door, uh, flyering. Uh, that helped a lot, but I think uh, also uh, if you know residents, uh, young people who are looking for jobs, please do connect them to us. Uh, as I said before, uh, part of my work as well, access to recreation, I'm looking to connect with young people from uh, uh, 14 to 29 who are looking to work with the City of Toronto. Uh, so if you have a young person who's looking for job opportunities during the summer, uh, what do you call, uh, they'll get support in terms of interview, resume, cover letter. They will also be prepped in the interview with uh, uh, also uh, an interview given to them. So if you know a young person uh, who's 14 years old interested in working for the city, please do connect them to me. And uh, as you know, the city hires about 9,000 people each year. Uh, the opportunities are seasonal, part-time. And uh, also you get a, uh, what do you call, a, uh, a letter of recommendation if you finish the program. So please, young people you know, uh, connect them to me. Uh, thank you. Okay, uh, so we were gonna do a panel discussion, but due to time, we definitely can't do a panel discussion. However, we wanted to rip, welcome Barry to our meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and Barry's going to share his words of wisdom. I don't know about that. Yes. I do know, I do know that I was prepared with a, with a, with a um, presentation. No, okay. And I don't follow presentations. <laughs> no problem. So you, you can see I have one, just in case, in case anybody wants to know. I did come and bring my notes, but I'm not going to talk about my notes. Um, so uh, just briefly, I'm... Um, in a new position, and the position is I'm the director for the Center for the Advancement um, sure. for Advancing the Interest of Black People in Toronto Community Housing. This is a um, position and a function that started uh, about uh, two years ago. Uh, initially, it came from the George Floyd moment when a bunch of senior staff went to the management at TCH and said, if um, Minneapolis, Minneapolis, uh, Minneapolis yeah, uh, was Toronto and George Floyd happened downtown, TCHE would be where the burning and the looting and the shooting started. That took in, uh, became a eight-point strategy, um, and the eight-point strategy that we are now is we deal, uh, the, the eight points that I'm um, um, charged with managing is decent and fair housing, meaning economic, uh, meaningful economic investment, um, healthy children and healthy families, access to culturally responsive mental uh, health and health services, 
community-centered safety and wellness, divesting from police culture, uplifting support networks, and addressing anti-black racism and cultural redress. So those are the eight strategy points that we're working for. We have a staff of 13 people at the moment, um, and our program base is um, policy review and policy development, education and advocacy, and complaints. Um, we, as a team, we are just beginning to gel and just beginning to um, put out our first annual report, which will be coming out March 21st, um, to coincide with the International Day for the Elimination of Racism. Um, but, and we work and we use a black tenant-centered model uh, in terms of how we work, which takes a high-level approach to, de uh, to develop a systematic framework to contextualize and understand the challenge. Um, and it's balanced with a ground-up approach to nuance our understanding of black tenant experiences in interacting with key institutions in Toronto. More important, all of that nice stuff, more important for me is the fact that we finally just got our most recent tenant survey came back, and the tenant survey says, out of 2,000 people that were surveyed, 40% of the tenant base of Toronto community housing is black. So we are not looking for clients. We are in the business of using, we haven't got hard numbers on the amount of black staff we have, that's the next step we're going but we're beginning to now look at how do we change the business models within TCHC to begin to reflect the realities of our tenant base. And it's long overdue, um, but that's the work we're doing. In terms of this particular event, I'm, um, I'm happy to come here tonight because, you know, it's coming back to Regent is, is coming back home because I've spent a lot of my time here, um, and seeing the people who are participating at this, somebody else might walk in and say, well, I only have 10, 15 people. I know who the 10, 15 people are. These people, you people represent half the community out there. So um, a couple of the things that I wanted to, aside from the Black History uh, commemoration and greetings and that kind of stuff, is to really talk with you in terms of the revite work that's going on here and remind people that we have been doing good work in Regent Park as a result of the redevelopment and those kinds of stuff. Look at this man over here huh? and his brother and, and, and um, young lady sitting at the back there with the hot dog stand now coming up. And, <laughs> the lady behind her and you know but w I want people to remember um, that um, let me just I got a couple of notes here that I made um, self-reliance solutions if you remember self-reliance solution that was that old guy Tom Murphy who used to initially uh, just be given a one-day job because he had substance abuse issues, and he had challenges. And so Carmel in, in CRC initially tweaked on and said, give him a job. And so a couple of us, John Kraljevic, the general manager was here before me, would give him some work. And then the more work we gave him, the more he showed up sober in the morning to do more work. And um, all of a sudden, Self-Reliance Solution became a business incubator. The first year I was here, I think we gave him about $70,000. Um, and then by the time he passed away in 2015, we were giving Tom half a million dollars a, a year through Revite Work. I remember, you know, some of you will know, will know Roy Dorrington. Roy was sitting over here in the back, he wasn't working. Um, I, he said he wanted to work, but I didn't know Roy, and Roy was giving me a lot of trouble in the corner with these boys over there. So how am I just going to give him a job off the... I gave him to Self-Reliance. Self Self-Reliance put him on Sherburn, 
And you know, if you're cleaning buildings on Sherburn, when I say you are cleaning feces, I'm not joking. There's lots. Roy hung, it, hung in there for three months solid, and I, I had no, no basis to say he's not eligible for a cleaning job in TC. So I vouched for him. From Roy, there's been about 15 people who are now senior supers who have come from this community, and that's just one program, right? And this is from work that's already going on, and that's from people in this community who we would some days walk by and say, well, don't even give that person a second thought. Give everybody a second thought, because it's the second thought that you give people that challenges them and makes them rise to the occasion. If Tom was around now, he'd be a million dollar business, right? Um, there's, there's a, you, you all are beginning to know about Vanessa, you know? Um, uh, um, uh, a numeric and, and, and talking about a counseling program. There was nobody who was doing counseling specifically for the East African community who had um, a, a specific religious and specific um, uh, uh, gender issues going on. Wanessa is now getting space. Wanessa is, people are coming to Wanessa um, and saying, can you come to Scarborough? Can you come to the, uh, the West and that kind of stuff? And we're saying to Vanessa, yeah, 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 by all means, but this is where you were born, this is where you need to focus on, and by all means, share the experience, but Vanessa is needed here yeah, before we're going to Scarborough or anything else. Um, there's a, a, a young man that I worked with when I was in Rexdale, another painting job, in TCHE, um, through our vendor programs, he started off painting two or three apartments a week with 0.5 of a van because some days the van didn't work. We're paying him eight, nine million dollars a year now. And this is 10 years later. These are, he was a TCHE tenant who started out and just kept going. Now, he, you know, I go on the vending thing. I say I, when I was in my old job, I need five buildings painted before the end of the year. Uh, Nat, come do the job, and um, I don't see him. I see all these people come to do the work, and um, we have no problems paying him. So what we do in the center, um, and then the last one that's here is, I helped here in the spectrum, them thinking about how we do uh, community safety and security here. I'm happy to see that uh, Marwan is here and doing the, 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 the work for this. Um, the people running the spectrum is, this is all community-based local enterprise and people who have talents and skills that we don't recognize who are walking among us. So when the, the, the Chamber of Commerce guys start talking about being in, in region, they know something is good here. They know something is, is, is there's potential and possibilities here. Um, it's, it's the same as when we, when we started the redevelopment. Nobody thought it was actually going to work. Nobody thought it was actually going to happen. And since then, the world has come to take a look. And it's happening in five different places in TCHC alone, and God knows how many other places across the country. So with knowing it's late in the evening, um, I want to end there and say, look, commemorate the Black History Month, commemorate the pride and, 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 and the fact that we've come a long way. We've got a long, long way further to go. But in this community, good ideas grow. And it's not just buildings, it's the people, it's the feeling, it's the spirit of the park that comes back Every time people think it's disappeared or it's gone away in another shape, the way it comes back is something that, as an old man, I can come by and say, yeah, you know, I had something to do with that a little while ago. And I'm, and I'm proud to see where it's going because of the people who are involved in it. So thank you all very much for having me. It's very nice coming back. I'll give it to Gail.
Thank you all. Thank you very much for coming. Here and ends our meeting. There are lots of resources that we have available, both for employment and for economic development. So if you're not on our mailing list, get on our mailing list, and we can share those opportunities with you. Have a good night. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please follow us on all our social media platforms, and for more information, please check out our website. Thank you.